While the town was still small, it was surrounded by farms. And while life on the farm sounds idyllic, in reality, it was far from easy. This was during the uh, Great Depression, 1931. I was born in, uh, at the same time, same year that I was born, they was building the stone church that Assumption Church has down here now. Since that time, they built a great big new church, but the stone church is the same age that I am. Uh, we did not have electric service until after the Second World War, when the rural electric start putting electric into all the farms. So it was probably about 1946 before we had electric in the house. So that meant in the summer months we, uh, we had no electric, we had no fans, we had no air conditioning. It's hard to imagine today with the luxury that we live in, how we survived back in those days. The, uh, the cows that we had where we uh, had our own milk cows, there was no electric milkers. They had to be milked by hand. It was, uh, it was just a hard, hard life, but the, the farmers had, they always said, well, they would never go hungry because they had their own food, even in the Depression. During the Depression, we fed people that were living in town because they had no way, no income, and other than a, a garden that they might have, they had a problem having, getting food. So, the, so they relied on the farmers. They'd come out, try to get a job for a day or so, so you give them some food to eat. didn't have no money, you know, but we always got fed pretty good. We had plenty of chickens and eggs, and when we wanted a chicken, we'd go out and catch one and chop his head off and fry him. <laughs> and uh, we'd kill hogs in the winter, and then they'd make sausage and, and coal pack or stuff, you know. We didn't have no refrigeration, so Everything was hung in the cisterns on a rope in carol, tin cans, about a gallon can. Butter, we made our own butter, and uh, we had our own milk, and we got by. When we uh, raised crops on the farm, farming was a little different than it is now. At that time, you, you cut the wheat and you put it in shocks, and it sat out there for so many weeks to cure, then you had your thrashing run. And the corn, when the corn was in, uh, we cut the corn by hand, put that in shocks, and then we had to uh, get the corn out of the shocks, and they would pile on a pile there, and when the weather would be right so you could haul it in, you'd have to go out there with the horses and the wagon and pick it up and haul it in. Most of our uh, crops were not sold because we had cattle and hogs and everything. Most of us fed right on the farm. You shucked the corn with, well, you had a team and wagon, and then why you just walked down the row and had a, had this wagon, you'd pull the ear out of the husk and then you'd throw it in a wagon when you got, most of the wagons were 30 bushel, when you got it full, then you took it to the uh, barn, and you'd shovel it in the barn, and then you'd come back out and st start all over again, and you just kept going for days and days till you had it done. Otherwise, we had everything we needed at home, so we raised all our own food at home. So and my mom canned everything that we had in the garden and in the orchard. She canned all the peaches and whatever. And we were pretty much self-supporting. And also, when uh, she would come to town, why uh, she would always, for the chicken, she would always usually go over here to the grain elevator and would get a sack of laying mash for the chickens. And at that time, it came with like a print sack. And boy, you didn't want to tear that sack because my mom would make like a dress or aprons or something out of that printed sack. And uh, that you had to be very careful because you really got in deep trouble if you messed that sack up. Far from the luxuries and comforts we enjoy nowadays, even the holidays were austere by today's standards. Well, I tell you, I remember the Christmases. They were pretty skimpy. Dad would go to town and maybe buy a dozen oranges or something like that, and that was really a good thing, and we'd get an orange for Christmas. And then we had an old tricycle 
that I don't know where they got or found, but anyway, they straightened it up and fixed it and painted it, and then it would be set on a Christmas tree. And then next year, about two weeks before Christmas, it'd disappear again, and then it'd come all painted up again and set on the Christmas tree. 